In the fifth episode in our Python OOP series, we will talk about inheritance. Inheritance could help us to write more than one class that will represent pretty much the same idea. We will learn how to use more than one classes now in our Python project that we are developing throughout this series, and we will answer some confusing topics that inheritance brings with it, like how to use the super function to make our projects being more efficient, and as well as implement the best practices of object-oriented programming. So with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so I minimized the code that we wrote so far in the class item. Now, in order to start solving the problems that we will solve in this episode, then I'm going to create here two instances. So I will say phone1 is equal to an item, and let's give it a name like JSC phone v 10 and then just use a random price and quantity, and I will copy and paste this and use another variable like phone2, and I will increase the version by 10, and let's say that this price for the phone2 should be 700. Alright, so now that we have created two instances of a phone, pay attention that those two items are phones. So we could think about some attributes that could represent phones in real life. Think about an attribute like broken phones, because we could have some phones that could have been broken, and so we cannot really mark it as a phone that we could really sell. So this means that we could go ahead and say phone1.brokenphones. Let's say that we have, unfortunately, one broken phone on our hand right now. So I will go ahead and assign the same attribute for our second phone. And now that we have came up with this realistic attribute, then the next step that we might think about could be creating a method that will go ahead and calculate the phones that are actually not broken, meaning subtracting the quantity by the broken phones amount, because this is totally making sense, and then we can understand what are the phones that we could go actually and sell them in the future. But we have a couple of problems creating a method that will go ahead and calculate such a thing, because we cannot really go ahead inside our item and do this smooth enough, because we don't really have the broken phones attribute assigned to self, and we cannot actually go ahead and create this method inside this item class because this method is not going to be useful for other hundreds of items that you will go ahead and create. This just represents a phone kind of item. So in order to solve this problem in terms of best practices in object-oriented programming, then we could go ahead and create a separated class that will inherit the functionalities that the item class brings with it. And that is exactly where we could benefit from inheritance and we could go ahead and create a separated class that we could name phone and then this phone class will inherit all the methods and all the attributes that item class has. So let's go ahead and simulate that. So I'm not going to delete the instances yet, but I'm going to go ahead here and create a class that I will name it phone. Now pay attention that I will not use a semicolon and I will use those brackets and I will specify what class I would like to inherit from. So I will inherit from item and then I will just use a pass temporarily because I would not like to use additional functionality right now inside this class. Okay, so now that we have created this class, then let's go ahead and first execute our program where at the first stage, the instances will be item instances. And this should not have any problems because we know that we can create those item instances and we will not receive any errors. But if we were to change those to phone, like that, then we should still not receive any errors. And that's just a basic way that you could use inheritance in order to represent different kinds of objects when you want to do that. Now, this could also be applied to other realistic programs that you want to come up with them by your own. But in my case, it totally makes sense to create some classes where each class will represent a kind of an item and then I could go ahead and inherit from the item class in each of the child classes that I will go ahead and create in the future. I could also use another class for a kind of item like laptop, and then I could go ahead and use a separated functionality for that. Now, when we talk about classes that we inherit from, then those are considered to be called parent classes. 
And when we use multiple classes that inherits from that parent class, then those are considered to be called child classes. So those are just terms that you want to be familiar with when we talk about object-oriented programming. And from here, we will see more advanced things that you can go ahead and do with your child classes. All right, so now let's go ahead and understand some more advanced things about inheritance. Now, throughout this series, we learned that it is not a great idea to assign attributes manually once we create those instances. And the better way to do that is actually going ahead and creating our constructor and pass the value that we'd like to immediately in the instance creation, exactly like here. So in order to solve this, then we're going to need to figure out how we are going to do that because creating the constructor inside this phone class is going to be a little bit tricky because we don't really want to break the logic that the double underscore init brings with the parent class, but we'd also like to pass in an additional attribute like broken phones that we will go ahead and deal with that attribute and assign it to the self object exactly like we have done in the second part of our series. So in order to keep the logic the same for this child class and as well as receive some more attributes, then for now I am going to go ahead and copy the code in our constructor and just paste this in right inside our phone class. And that's making sense temporarily because we receive the exact same parameters that we should receive when we instantiate an instance and we also have now the control to receive some more parameters like we want to do with the broken phones. So let's go ahead here and say broken, so I will just scroll here and I will say broken phones is equal to zero. Let's also receive a default value for that. And let's go ahead and type in a validation for the broken phones. So I will allow myself to just copy that and paste this in and we'll use assert quantity, I mean broken phones is greater than or equal to zero and I will change this to broken phone like that, actually broken phones and this should be exactly like we have done with the quantity and now let's go ahead to the section of assign to self object and we can use self dot broken phones is equal to broken phones like that and you can see that here we have actions to execute. Now it could have been nicer if we could also create a class attribute for the phone class. And that will mean that we could go ahead here and say all is equal to an empty list. And then we could go ahead and use a phone.all.append like that. And now if I was to go ahead and run this program, then you can see that I will not receive any errors. Now to check that this works, then I'm also going to pass in here one and I'm going to do the same here as well. And I'm going to remove those, all right? I'm going to remove the hard-coded attributes and the program still works. Now I'd also like to test this by applying one of the methods that we have wrote so far. And that will be obviously a method that I'd like to use from the parent class because we inherit those methods. So I can go ahead and use phone one dot calculate total price. And it makes sense to print this. So I will go ahead and print that. And you can see that print phone one dot calculate total price. And now if I was to run that, then you can see that I receive a result. So this means that I don't have any errors. Now I'm not sure if you paid attention to this, but if I was to scroll up a bit, then you're gonna see that the constructor in the child class is complaining about something. And let's hover the mouse and see what is the warning. Now you can see that it says to us, call to double underscore init of super class is missed. And what that means, it means that when we initialize the double underscore init method inside a child class, then Python expects for some function to be called intentionally. Now this function is named super. And what super allows us to do, it allows us to have full access to all the attributes of the parent class. And by using the super function, we don't really need to hard code in the attribute assignment like we have done with the name, price, and quantity. And as well as for the other validations that we have executed every time that we want to come up with a child class. 
Now imagine how hard that is going to be if for each of the child classes that we will create in the future, we will have to go through copying and pasting a third price and quantity and as well as doing the assign to self objecting in those three lines. That is going to be a lot of duplication of code. Now to save us that time, that is exactly why we need to use the super function. The super function will allow us to have the attributes access from the parent classes and therefore we will be able to fully implement the best practices in inheritance when it comes to object-oriented programs. Now again, this program works because we assign the attributes of name, price and quantity for the self object in the child class. But if I was to remove those three lines and as well as those two lines, now those lines are happen to be the lines that I have copied and pasted and try to run this program, then you can see that we receive attribute error phone object has no attribute price and pay attention from what line it comes from. It comes from line 21 from the item class because it thinks that it has the attribute of price but we never have the price attribute in the phone level because we just deleted the self.price is equal to price and that's why now we have some problems and we are going to replace all the lines that we have deleted with the following thing that I'm going to just execute now. So I'm going to go to the first line of our constructor and I'm going to say call to super function to have access to all attributes slash methods. And then I'm going to say super then I'm going to open up and close parentheses and then I'm going to use the double underscore in it method like that. Now you can see that the second that I have completed this, then there are no more warnings about the constructor in this child class. And you can also see that this double underscore in it method expects for some special arguments. Now those special arguments obviously coming from the item class that we inherit from. So if I was to pass in here name and also price and also quantity then this should be fine now you can also ask yourself isn't it a duplication of code the fact that we also copied and pasted the parameters that we receive in the child class and yeah that is a perfect question that is something that could be solved by something more advanced if you heard about keyworded arguments that is something that we can solve it with that way and then we will not have to duplicate the parameters that we receive for the constructor, but that is not something that I'm going to show for that stage. I'm going to stick with it and I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now, calling the super function and as well as the init method right after it should be responsible to have the same behavior like we had previously. So we should still see 2500 for this print line and we should not see any errors. And if I was to run the program, then you can see that we receive the expected result. So that way we implement the best practices of object-oriented programming. For each child class that we use a separated constructor, we also gonna need to call the super function in order to have fully access for all the attributes and methods that are coming from the class that we inherit from. All right, so I minimize the code for our classes and I also left with one instance of phone here. Now I want to show you the results of the following things. So I will say print and I will see what is the list of all in the item class is going to bring us back. So I'm going to say item.all and then I'm also going to say phone.all. If you remember, we implemented this class attribute as well here. So I will minimize the code back and then I will run our program. Now you can see something very weird in here. We see item. And then we basically see the result of the REPR method that comes from the item class. Now, the reason that this happens, because we never implemented an REPR method inside the phone class. So that's why we see this ungeneric result of item. Now, you can also pay attention that we only create an instance of the phone class. So that's not so good that we see item in those outputs. So what we could use instead of hard coding in the name of the class in the REPR method inside the item class, then we could access to the name of the class generically. Now, if I was to replace this 
with some special magic attribute that will be responsible to give me the name of the class, then this will be perfect. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to use curly brackets and I'm going to say self dot double underscore class dot double underscore name. So that is a generic way to access to the name of the class from the instance. And by doing this, then besides receiving item hardcoded string, then I should receive the name of the class that I initialized from the very beginning. So this should be phone because that is the only single instance that I have right now. And you can see that this is exactly the result that I'm receiving back. So that is perfect. Now I said earlier that by using the super function, then we basically have access to all the attributes and the methods that are coming from the class that we inherit from. So what that means, it means that we will also have the access to the class attribute of all that is inside the item class. And I'm talking about that attribute. All right. Now to show you that, then I'm going to open back the code from the phone class and I'm going to remove the all attribute. And I'm just going to do that right now. And I'm also going to delete the actions to execute where I use phone.all.append because we no longer having the all attribute in the phone class. And if I was to remove those and execute our program now, then you can see that I still receive the same result. So that is a great idea removing the old attribute in the child class level. It is a great idea to only use the old attribute in the parent class because by using the super function in the child class, we will have access to the old attribute. So this means that if one day we'd like to have access to all the items instances that have been initialized, including the child classes, then accessing them from item.all should also be enough. Now you might be confused how this line is responsible to add this instance inside the all attribute that is happened to be a list. And that's happening because by using the super function and as well as the init, then we basically call the init method inside the parent class. Now in the latest line inside this method, we also use item.all.append which is also going to be accessible from the phone class. So that's why calling the all class attribute from the item class is a better idea because it will give us the complete picture. So I hope you learned something new in that episode and I hope this wasn't too much confusing for you. I remember myself learning about how inheritance works was a little bit confusing. I didn't understand it pretty well, but I hope that this episode really made a clear picture to everyone. So if you enjoyed this video as usual, hit the like button and as well as subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next episode.